Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. So today Master is probably to present the Malaysian Architecture Education Online Lecture Series. Thank you for joining us. So for those who are new, Masa is Malaysia Architecture Student Alliance. Uh, it's a non-profit student uh, committee acting directly under PAM, which is the Pertubuan Architect Malaysia, consisting of student representative from all architecture institute in Malaysia. So during this time of MCO, Masa and PAM have decided to launch this online lecture series for students to be more productive and gain more insights. So architect Ardianta is the head of PAM Education and Dr. Zach Zaro is the convener. So there will, no, there will be more series coming up to this. So do keep in touch with us. Um, so my name is Guma Sylvester Makajil, a MASA representative from UCSI University. And I will be your MC for today. Okay, so I would like to welcome our guest speaker for today, architect Abu Zarim bin Abu Bakar. He is the principal of AZ Reka Atelier. Upon graduation in 1987, he worked for four years at two of London's established architectural firms, Lyvelin Davis Weeks and Clifford T. and Gill, before returning to Malaysia to join the private sector. So soon after he had set up AZ Rakitele in 1993, now over accumulated 30 years of experience in commercial, residential, condominium, and institutional development. He has devoted much of his um, time at uh, Putuban Architect Malaysia, um, serving at various positions since becoming a council member in 2004. He is currently the deputy president of uh, PAM and the president of Balai Iktisas Malaysia. So architect Abu Zarim, together in collaboration with several other design professionals, is now able to offer many years of experience locally and abroad in the design and building professions. Over the many years, he volunteered his time in many education institutions, including UITM, UTMKL, UM, UPM, UKM, Taylor's University, UCSI University, LUCT, several polytechnic and college community. So together with other stakeholders, he helped develop several training modules for industrial, industrial building system or IBS and building information modeling, BIM. Okay, so uh, enjoy and relax everyone. So we will have a Q&A session at the end of the sharing. Uh, but if you have any questions uh, in the middle of the sharing, feel free to type them down in the chat box so we can attend, them, attend to them at the end of the sharing. So uh, architect Abu Zarim, how are you? All right, thank you very much. All right, okay, uh, good. So um, I'll pass the floor to you. Thank you very much. Uh, All right. Let me just check and make sure that my slides are working. <laughs> okay. I seem to be working now. Uh, since sure. Start, uh, okay, right, got it. Okay, right. so thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Masa and Pam for inviting me to give, me, to give a talk on uh, building information modeling. Now, this talk will, it's not really that too long because what it is basically is a quick introduction to what you would, uh, as students of architecture, will be facing, okay, when you go out into the world of employment very soon. I think some of you are in the final year, some of you are almost towards the end of your uh, master's degree if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so what I term this is uh, building information modeling. What are the essential for students like yourself? Now, uh, okay, let's move on to the next one. Basically, these are the things that I will be covering uh, over the course of the talk. Uh, as you can see, I'm not sure how many of you are actually very any uh, well versed in building information modeling. So I'll just do a quick uh, definition or some explanation on building information modeling and what it is, what is it that you need to know about it. And then the second part that I want to, to stress upon would be, uh, would be why, why learn BIM, okay? It's just not enough that you guys already are up to your nose and head with uh, other things, you know, doing 
throughout your course of uh, the examinations and your own course design and so on. Then, basically, I will tell you how how to learn BIM. If you are interested after my talk, uh, which may not happen, so it's okay. And following that, I will touch a bit on what exactly the you need to learn. How to learn is one thing, what to learn is another thing. Then I will just briefly touch on the benefits of BIM skills, having BIM skills. Maybe early on, you, you'll, I will stress it and I will repeat it again towards the end. Then I will look into, I'll just touch quickly a bit of, uh, of what Pam is doing, what are the programs that we do for the last three, four years that we have done. And we have been progressing, uh, you know, in terms of what we post to our members, which includes students, uh, student members. And I do believe that uh, quite a lot of you are not aware of what we do for, for PAM uh, student members. Anyway, you'll, you'll see what we do. And finally, I will end up by closing. Yeah, closing with a, a few things just as a reminder that why BIM is important for the fans. Okay, I'll skip this. Uh, I'll skip the profile because we have already, uh, our host has already, MC has already mentioned some of it. I'll just tell you a bit of the uh, BIM experience I have over the years. Okay, we got it start, started way back in actually a lot, a lot earlier than 2016, but this is where we started in PAM itself. Now, uh, as pointed out, okay, I've been on several uh, panel member on several of these uh, BIM working groups to come up with a lot of these uh, BIM syllabus for all, all level of building information modeling. Um, at the same time, I've been invited to become a panel, one of the panel juries for a number of uh, student BIM student competition. Okay, so uh, whether you are surprised or not, that students uh, in Malaysia have actually been, been doing a BIM and some of them have actually participated in big workshop and big competition. Now, uh, since 2017, 2018, I was uh, asked to look after the uh, BIM committee in PAM. And since then, we have come up with a number of programs which I will touch a bit later. And personally, together with uh, a lot of the other committee members, we have come up with uh, several BIM syllabus. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay, so I'll start. What is BIM? Okay, now maybe some of you can put your answers in the chat of what you understand. Okay, so but at the end of the day, oh, before I forget, I did mention uh, earlier, uh, I forgot to mention earlier that whoever is interested in downloading uh, this presentation, which I will make, I have made available. Okay, at the end of the presentation of my talk, there is a QR code. So stay till the end to be able to uh, download this presentation. Okay, uh, so what is BIM? So first and foremost, you know, I think a lot of you mentioned a uh, uh, basic understanding is the this building information model. Now, it can also mean to other people, when you get more uh, in depth into it, it basically can also be building information management. So the important word here are two things, okay, information, okay, and how you manage the, the models. Okay, how do you manage the information? Those are the important things that you need to look into or be aware of. Now, uh, okay, so there are two extreme views here. One, okay, which says that, you know, uh, I think a lot of you have this perception is that BIM is rabbit. Uh, no, not at all, you know. 
beam is actually a lot more than that. On the other end, you know, uh, uh, many people think that, oh, with beam, you press one button, okay, and everything turns out great. How I wish it was true. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, we have to be very realistic. Okay, there's a lot of things to learn. And basically, all of us wants to see what's the practical uh, benefits that you will gain when you learn BIM. Okay, when you uh, basically spend time and effort to uh, acquire these, these skills. So moving on. So I have a few things which I uh, like to share. Okay, first and foremost, okay, it is a process. All right, it is a process. No, is it, it is a process no different than what you are doing at the moment. But instead of doing things manually, you are using digital tools. Okay, so these are the tools which uh, you will look into or you may have used, you may have not used it. But uh, basically to, to design and develop and manage a virtual building model. So number two, it's also a process. Look at the word process, where physical, our uh, physical drawings and rendering are automatically generated from the model. So how many of us are very uh, aware? You know, I think if you are working with uh, software such as SketchUp, you do backwards. You do the model, and then you cut sections through it. You get uh, how do I say this? You get uh, various elevation views from it. Okay, this is what people or students or, or even uh, practices are doing it. So which means they are not actually, they are on the way to doing game, but this is just a start. It's, it's not even, it's just the beginning. Okay, so next, again, the word again is process. Okay, the process in which internal and external collaboration now, when I say important of collaboration here, you are basically looking at what we do at the moment. Now, I'm not sure how many of you have gone for your practical training or internship and so on, but if you have, you know that all, uh, in, in practices, we are still doing things the old way, the traditional way, which means we drop our drawings, we convert it to PDF and we send it over the internet to our members. The problem with this is that we don't see any collaboration. It's called working in silo. Because you're working in silo, information are not being passed, being communicated or being used at real time. So uh, because of this, you know, this, uh, there is a lot of mistakes that happen throughout the whole process. So with BIM, okay, with BIM, this collaboration will manage it more efficiently and with definitely less errors. So number four, again, the word process here, you know, where information of architectural elements are being put and stored and uh, what you call it, exported to generate the, the, the drawings, you know, the information to the all the stakeholders, including and finally to the contractor as well as the uh, subcontractors or the fabricator. Finally, at PAM, what we what we think is more suitable definition is where it is a process where we use various digital technologies to improve what we all do or what we love doing best. That is architecture. Now, so that is that is something that I feel is what we love more. Okay, being student of architecture, that's what you want to uh, achieve at the end of the day, right? Okay, so there are many reasons why you should learn. You know, a lot of students uh, say things like, you know, why should I learn? Why should I think? Why should I bother learning BIM? I've got enough skills already. Well, you will see why uh, very soon, okay? So uh, whether we like it or not, this 
uh, BIM is very, very important. You can see with the event of this pandemic, already everybody is thrown into quantum. Everybody thrown is into confusion, you know, but with BIM, you can still work. You can still work offline because all the things are being shared online, shared in the cloud. So BIM is uh, for many, many countries, okay, uh, it, is, it is almost essential, it is almost mandatory, it is almost second nature, it's almost what we call the normal, okay, although now that you see in the, in the news for the last couple of months, uh, you know, people are talking about the new norm. For the rest of the world, this norm is already there. They are normally, in fact, some countries have even moved on beyond this. Okay, to things like uh, integrated design delivery. Okay, that is something which we can have uh, in another section. So, uh, yes, so BIM will actually change the AEC profession. How do I? AEC stands for uh, Architecture, Engineering, Construction. I like to add one more word towards it, which is basically. AECO. O means operation. So once you finish uh, the construction and you pass it down to the uh, stakeholder or the building owner, then it has to be operated. So O, don't be surprised that you will see in future slides or, or in your dealings later on, there will be AECO. Okay, so now we are pushing for universities, for clients, for design codes, contracts, all these things are going to be changed. And the tool or the word that is going to integrate all of this is building information modeling. Okay. Now, globally, what I like to show here is how all these various countries have or are going to do. Now, you look at this country, this is a bit dated but most of this country have already done so. Okay, you talk about Finland, some of them have even started as early as 2007. Okay, when this means uh, mandated, they are going to. UK and Singapore, uh, you know, a lot earlier than ours. Okay, 2020, Singapore has gone even earlier, 2013 to 2015. Okay, as you look, US, they are not mandated, but the industry has taken. Now, most of the other countries, they have either mandated it or the industry have taken upon themselves to do it. Unfortunately, for Malaysia, we have to have some uh, mandi mandatory uh, policy from the government to have it done here. So, you see the blue mark, this is in future. But again, some of them have already been uh, preceded, okay, overtaken. Uh, countries like Peru uh, and Chile, okay, they are they are a bit, they, they are going to do it, you know. Chile this year, Peru uh, 2032. What? Who else? You know? Then all the other countries, these are being planned, and some of them have actually been uh, implemented. Japan, China. Hong Kong and so on. Okay, these are the country adoption is going to be done. All right, moving on. Okay, so what about Malaysia? What, why, why is this important to you guys as students? Okay, don't forget once you, once you finish or graduate or you finish your final year, you are going into the market force either for work or for internship. Now, when you go into internship, these are the things that will, force, will be made known to you, okay, or you have to get used to it. So in Malaysia, we are talking, by this year, 2020, it is already BIM level 2 implementation. Okay, so now you can see this, these things uh, being, being done, okay, uh, by JKR or government tender. So you will see that BIM, uh, part of the clause that says that this BIM is, uh, is, is almost mandatory. 
okay so or rather previously they have actually done this and they have made it okay preferred something like preferred if you don't have beam capable or uh, competency then you don't don't bother to even bother to even tender for, for the job so it is starting at the contractor stage so contractor still have to do and because contractor have to do it uh, this is also be made by the client in this case the government okay so projects over 100 million you have to do it okay so for if you happen to work or do your internship for companies like this where the jobs is over 100 million then most definitely beam skills will be very very useful to uh, for you guys okay contractor have to do it for private projects so like it or not okay so in, in, in a way private private uh, companies are also doing private uh, projects are also doing it then beam model uh, this has been deferred slightly so by 2021 instead of 2022 where you have to submit or where the companies have to submit beam models in order to get their approval okay beam uh, Bomba submission is also online. Okay, integrated beam in design is also, this is already being implemented in the time bone uh, And a lot of, a lot of, uh, what do you call it, a lot of projects are also here. But most of them are actually in the infrastructure projects. Now, JKR, they have been doing it for a long time. Okay, they have specifications, they have facility management, they have almost throughout the, the, the whole uh, life cycle of, uh, of the building. Okay, now if you are wondering or you are worried that there is, uh, what do you call it, there is no documentation, don't worry because CIDB, through CIDB, which is uh, uh, what do you call it, Construction Industry Development Board, okay, so they have a lot of guidelines and these are free for you to download. Okay, so moving on. Okay, now this by 2021, submission must be done. Beam submission must be done. Okay, the chances is that uh, whichever, whichever companies, architecture companies that you go to work, most of their jobs are will be based in the city status okay so uh, unless the companies are doing jobs in, not in uh, not in a city status authority okay so at the end of the day all the city uh, city status authorities they will implement this okay and it is job not over 100 million just 10 million so virtually almost all the projects that you will encounter in your internship or your future work will have to take beam into consideration so whether you like it or not beam becomes very essential to the companies that you're going to work with or internship in do your internship okay let's move on okay definitely while you are at your university beam when you have this beam situation it will let you do all this stuff okay meaning you can produce your drawings more efficiently you can access visualization analysis and collaboration you, you know how early in the early uh, normally when before you start work or before you start your project in any uh, you know you do site details you do a lot of things that is in group form so this is where team helps you you don't have to wait for somebody to produce it you can actually do this real time in the cloud okay so you don't have to do a lot of uh, you know that the duplication of work will can be put to a minimum then definitely whilst you are doing this because it helps you to study better do your work faster and more efficient okay you will more or more or less be able to concentrate on what you do best which is design itself okay so yeah at the end of the day 
your learning outcome will be much, much better. You have, you can do better perspective, you can do automated, your, your drawings very well, and, and, and animation is there, okay? These tools are there for you to use. Now I know, uh, having gone to many trades, I know that a lot of the students do this separately. But you see, you, you, you do one and then you follow by another one, by another one and so on and so forth. But using BIM, you can have it all now and then. You know, now and almost immediately. Okay. So for, for students themselves, okay, as I said, now, if you are learning BIM, and I know that a few of the, what they call this, local university have started, although their main concern is to teach uh, Revit rather than BIM. Okay, but that is better than nothing at all. Okay, with this, with these skills, at least you are better off than those who have not even begun to, to start thinking about this. Okay, then with this in mind, what, as I said, and I stress again here, is that uh, your job prospect or your internship prospect is, will be much, much better. Because with the skills, people will trust you more. Your future employers will be uh, able to say, ah, these students have got the skills. I want them. Okay. And I do believe that, uh, you know, if you go to a, if you go to a interview, all right, if, if, if you have the skills, all right, against other candidates who do not have, Believe me when I say that you will be choose, chosen or you will definitely secure that interview. So whether, uh, so now, uh, basically what I'm telling you, the message is BIM is the future, but it is now, not quite the future, but now, now meaning you have to have it. Okay. So what can you do? When you have the skills, how are you useful to the companies that you are going to work with or internship with? The first level would be a modeler, which as, as I said, and I was stress here, even at part one, you should be looking into this. All right. Uh, you probably have got it, the skills now using, uh, using tools or software like SketchUp, but this goes beyond that. Because when you do the modeling, you need to also input the information into the models. The next stage will be to coordinate. Now, coordinators or coordinators here is where you have in a small firm or a larger firm where you have a lot of BIM modelers and you have to coordinate all of them, who does what, when to do, and so on and so forth. So this is the next step. Uh, at the higher level, Okay, so if you look at that, BIM modelers normally after diploma or degree part one. Okay, so that is the level that you're looking at. Now, if you can have the skill much earlier, then you'll be better off. BIM coordinators will probably be after your master's. Okay, or before your master's, you must have the skills. Then the next level is the BIM manager themselves. Okay, so this normally will get uh, you will be able to call yourself with the proper working experience and skills after three or four years of working, three to five years working. Of course, you can go on to do other things in BIM itself. Okay, not, of course, all of you don't want to be the rest. All of you definitely wants to become an architect. But architects, uh, not necessarily whilst before you even open your Yo, how do I say this? Uh, owners, okay, practitioners of your own with your own practices, okay. These are the other things uh, that you can consider, okay, such as analysts, software developer, facilitators, consultants, as I mentioned to some of you guys uh, a bit earlier, the researchers, educators, all these are, and uh, and uh, what do you call it? the choice is limitless. 
Okay, so basically, uh, BIM coordinator, all right, basically coordinates all the tools within his department or within his practice. Now, what I mean here is that somebody can be doing the, the doors, and you know, somebody can be doing the various levels, if it is a multi story building, and so on and so forth. Now, he needs to coordinate and make sure that everything falls in place. So, that is what a, basically a model. A, a coordinator will do. Moving on, okay, the BIM, BIM manager manage all the rest, okay, especially on a particular subject. He sets up the BIM workflow. He sets up, he coordinates the whole use of BIM in the whole project, okay. He makes sure that who can access to what part of the model because model you cannot access to every part unless you are given the permission to do it. And definitely, he must make sure that the data that is put into the model is secured and it's archived properly and it is coordinated with all the other stakeholders. Right, so we, let's us move on to the next part. How do you learn this? Now, this is an interesting subject, uh, uh, a topic, on its own by, uh, by itself. So I will just summarize a few points here. Okay, so uh, now this may apply to you, it may not, but just look at this. The, the challenges for architecture students when they want to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced, you know, and I want to learn BIM, but what happens, okay? First and foremost, maybe your university, your institution, your poly or your diploma, your, your, what do you call it, your college may not be teaching BIM. Okay, so what do you do there? Then, of course, you yourself, all right, you yourself have got this challenge because most of you say, you know, ah, why should I change? Why I bother? You know, why do I have to learn? Why do I have to change my study habit? I'm quite good at it myself, okay? Then you talk about resources. Here maybe we're talking about total dollar and cents, and maybe you don't have laptops that are powerful enough. But don't worry, you know some of the some of the things that I'm going to tell is is very very uh, useful. Of course, there is training that you need to go through. Now, having said that, some students have actually been able uh, to learn on their own. Okay, so because there is no training, therefore your skills are not there, okay? Your capability or your competency will also suffer here. So what are your options? Okay, now, first and foremost, whether uh, you are aware or not, I'm going to tell you here. So there are many, many platforms that are available free of charge, okay? Free of charge. Of course, the, the most popular one would probably be uh, Revit, you know, Navisworks, Graphicsoft, Archicad, Solibri, all these are available to you, okay, because you are a student. But because uh, once you are no longer a student, this will not be able, uh, these are not really, uh, available to you guys. So what I mean to say here, since they are free for you to choose and to learn and to be trained on, don't miss the opportunities. Now, at the end of the day, of course, because they are free, they are restricted in their use. Most of them are actually full blown. The only thing that you cannot do would probably be, you know, they, they are there for learning purposes. And even if you, you are able to do safe and so on, at the end of the day, when you produce your, uh, your drawings, there is a watermark on that. But it doesn't matter, okay? Why? It doesn't matter because you are there to learn, to hone, to practice your skills, to make sure that at the end of your study in your university, you have these particular skills that you are going to go after. Okay, so, uh, okay, so now, uh, what are the, the training available to you guys? That of course, as I said earlier, your universities may have it themselves. 
Okay. Then there are the paid courses. These are very expensive. Okay. Very expensive. So uh, while, unless you have got rich uncles and parents, you know, uh, please, you know, uh, do, do take them up. You know, do take them up. But I do think that even listed party companies do, do give subsidy to them. Okay, now, as student members, which I hope you all are student members of FAM, okay, we do hold regularly uh, courses and very, very subsidized rate. Okay, do check it out. Okay, do check it out. Spend sometimes, normally it's over the weekend. And now we are seriously thinking because of this pandemic, we are going to do these courses online. So do watch out for this. And uh, as mentioned and required uh, later on, I will tell more details. We are going to have, FAM is going to have uh, joint programs with educational uh, institution, universities, police, uh, college communities, and so on. Okay, to have this program where we will uh, train your lecturers and in return, okay, we are training them for free. So that at the end of the day, they will sign an agreement with us and uh, agree to teach the students at their university. So in reality, while we are forking out all the money, okay, to be able to uh, prepare students for the industry. Of course, uh, there are YouTube's video online tutorials on. This takes a little bit of discipline to, to actually undertake, okay, because uh, yeah, they, they, they may focus, they may, they may just focus on the basics, okay, not, not really the real thing. But I know a number of students who have actually gone this way and have become very, very competent uh, beam, beam users. Okay, so having said that, okay, you have seen how you can do this. You have seen, I have mentioned a lot of ways to, to do things. But having learned, you know, having known all these things, now what actually do you need to learn? Okay, here there are two, two levels that we are looking at, basically the modeler, and basically the second level would probably be the coordinator. Once you come out and you work, then you're looking at the next level, which is becoming a team manager, if that is what you are. And I do believe that not all students are, sorry to say this, meant to be good designers. Okay, some uh, will go into the field, some will go on to the side, some will be managing the, the, the company itself, some will be doing. So very few of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a small percentage will actually become good designers themselves. So having said that, okay, what do you learn in the end? As I mentioned earlier, modeling is one of the things. Okay, the next is management of the team itself. Next is the collaboration. How do you collaborate within each other, uh, with, with, with your own uh, fellow work or staff or, and so on? And Lastly, it will be the virtual design and construct. Okay, this is when you go, when you go out into the field itself. Okay, then uh, what are the things that you need to do in order to beam yourself? Okay, it's not like in Star Trek, Scotty beam me up. Okay, that's a different type of thing. Okay, so moving on. First and foremost, because there are so many platforms out there, so many, uh, you know, so you got to choose which is suitable to you. Of course, everybody will want to do the most popular one or basically the industry standard. Okay, I shall not name what it is. I'm sure you already have guessed. So choose a suitable authoring platform. This is the first thing that you need to consider. Next, next is to choose a common data environment. This is, this is things uh, in, in the cloud, okay? Because in order for you to be able to do, to, to get the full benefit of being, you must have a common CDE, all right? To collaborate either within the office 
and later on within other stakeholders like the architects, the engineers, the QS, you know, the, the all, all the contractors and the fabricators and so on. So you need to learn how to collaborate with each other. So you need to find which is the CDE that is more suitable to you. Okay. Next one is your BEP. Okay, which is basically the BIM execution plan. Okay, this is basically how you want to do, how do you want to execute? Okay, when you start doing a, a project, how do you want to do this? So you need a plan, just like, just like in design, you need a plan, all right, to do your design. Same thing in BIM, okay, you do need this. So that's the third part. Next, you need to also develop your collaboration and your work process. Once you have the plan, you also need to know how you want to collaborate and how do you work with all the other stakeholders. Okay, so which means basically we don't want we don't want to, to have things like <laughs> the architects doing one one way of doing things. Okay, the engineers doing another way. We want to make sure that what the information that is being uh, put together in that single building is collaborated. It is integrated. It is used. You know, we don't want that. You know, your layering is different from mine, and so on and so forth. You know, your data then will not be useful to them. So number five, okay, having done your own office, then you have to do for your projects. Okay. So just think as if uh, at university, just think that you are you are doing this project not for yourself but also for a potential client or as if treated as a client, client-based uh, project. Yeah, you may have fun, you may have do wondrous things, but think as if this is what you are going to do in real life. You know, that will be a good training for your BIM competency later on. But okay, this is, whilst it's not uh, useful, but it's something maybe, you know, that you may want to consider. You know, you don't have staff at the moment, but make sure that you have the right training. Think yourself as a staff. Think yourself, uh, how do you evaluate yourself? You know, what are the resources that you need? Of course, rewards, you know, maybe rewards. Once you achieve certain things, maybe you can go out into the town, have a movie or whatever it is. There must be certain rewards. That way it keeps your interest very, very focused to what you want to do. You know, so if you just do for the sake of doing, then of course our, all things become a chore and not uh, not an enjoyment to look into. Okay, so those six things are things that you need to consider. Now look at them one by one. What you do is look at the tools. What are the tools that you want to choose or start with? Okay, so basically these are how you choose it. What are the criteria? What are the conditions that the, 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 the software needs to, to fulfill yourself? Okay, your needs rather than, rather than I have to learn this. Yeah, so does it, does it fit your needs? That's, okay, first and foremost, you don't want to do something that is hard to learn. You know, that is not difficult, that is easy and it's fun to learn and use. Okay, start with something very, very simple and it's enjoyable. You know, you know how, how people go, you know, you get a, a, a I, I will use the analogy of, of driving a car. You know, when you first come out, you may not have a Ferrari, you may not have a Ferrari. You may start with a Tanchel. Of course, now Tanchel don't have. You know, you may start with Alzea, or, you know, and so on, and move on to MyV, and so on and so forth. So the same thing with BIM. Yeah, the same thing with BIM. Don't start with the, the, the most sophisticated. You know, start with something that is useful, something that is easy and fun to learn. Second, you know, of course, this, uh, this as student, you don't have to consider this. But eventually, when you go out, you will want to do this. Now, at the moment, there is a perpetual license and there is the second part which you pay uh, annually. 
this is just like becoming uh, the perpetual lessons is that you can use uh, you can use it anytime you want and it is going to be compatible with all future uh, software all future uh, version but annual subscription which uh, a lot of people are moving into is that every year you have to pay for the rights to use it which means once you lapse your subscription okay your files will not be able to read you will not be able to read your future, your previous file so there is a consideration in looking into this right uh okay all right so so whether it is open beam or not when i mean open beam means you know you use something that can be read by all the other software beam software and the best way to make sure is that whether you can export to 2d cad and using ifc ifc means stands for industry foundation class okay that means it's like pdf you know once you use pdf almost almost all the other software can be pdf and so on and so forth okay so like uh, cat dfx so for bim okay it must be ifc file that means whatever you do in the native uh, software it can be it, you it must be able to be exported to ifc standards okay so sorry that's okay number four okay whether your lock uh, your laptop or your computer so a hardware can use it or do you need to upgrade of course the better uh better specs laptop will be much much better because it lacks uh it will be able to use now because of that the software is very important and certain software can actually use very minimal uh, very basic hardware requirement okay there are some the sophisticated one if your laptop some don't even work on laptops okay even if it works it will take like it's going to be very lacking you know it's going to slow your work down okay so this is very very important for you to take into consideration of course when you have the desktop maybe not a problem at all um right so having said all the various training ways that you can do okay there are see what is it that you have what are the available uh, software and of course uh, knowing you guys the younger generation this is where you normally go to the youtube okay and there's, there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of training uh, videos for you to learn from okay but as i said you have to be disciplined in order to maximize your benefits from there okay uh, now when you are working make sure that okay maybe your in the company that you go to are beginning to just uh, you know start up your team okay but at the end of the day you know is the, the the software that the company or yourself you're going to do you know do they have they are, are they bundled with a lot of the other tools that is required to do theme and collaboration you know because once if not you have to buy and spend more on the additional tool okay this could be very uh, can be quite expensive at times all right um so the authoring tools i've given you uh, just a, a flash of what is available in the market at the moment okay with the first two being one of the most popular uh, in 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 malaysia at the moment now uh, just to give you uh, uh, the first two one is actually being used for example architect it is preferred by the architects because it is and developed by the architect whereas revit is actually being for the university so you can have anything under the sun using revit all the rest okay uh, are actually uh, there but not quite uh, used not not useful meaning meaning they are not uh, popular at the moment in the malaysian market all right 
there's one local uh, local developed uh, platform here, which is this thing. So you may want to check it out for your learning. And as I said that uh, here, that the choice is actually a lot. You know, maybe as students, you probably need to focus either the first two, the first two software that you want to put. Okay, uh, I did mention the common data, uh, common data uh, environment. What are the options that you need to consider? So, uh, basically, it's the single source of information used to collect, manage, and disseminate information, documentation, graphic, and non graphic, meaning it's basically in the cloud. Now, for uh, okay, this, this is ba basically what you look into, okay, whether it is a local server, cloud server, and so on and so forth. Let me just quickly, I guess I'm a bit running short of time here, okay, uh, basically how do you access your model, because that's what you are, you are going to do here. Now, when they say remotely, you may be at home, you may be on site, you may be, you know, uh, overseas, but you want to see what is happening, can you assess it remotely? Okay, um, right. So, whether it comes with functions that can talk to each other to the other stakeholders, these are also very, very important uh, considerations for you to consider. So, this is the service, all right. This is when you are actually com your, your company, whether they have it or not. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll quickly go through this. Okay, now for, for students, okay, this is what you are going to look into for the moment. Okay, because this is basically the, the level that we are talking about. It's either the Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, and so on and so forth. Okay, there are many other modes. The only limitations is that you're not working on time. You can only share. Okay, you can only share the, the, the file. Okay, when I say uh, not in real time, means that what? If you are in real time, a, a proper CDE, what you change, your colleague may, may change, and your colleague may not be in the same room or even in the same town. Okay, so that's what I meant by uh, collaborating real time. So if the engineers change something, you can come. You cannot change the, uh, the, 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 your colleague's file, but you can comment and say, hey, look, can you do this? Oh, I think this is, uh, needs to be uh, refined and so on and so forth. That's what I meant by real time. Otherwise, if you can change them, then you know, you'll be messing up uh, their work you know, and they will start complaining about you and so on and so forth. So you can comment, but you cannot change. Okay, so Google Drives are free to use and so on and so forth. Okay, so you know about this. Now, basically, basically this is where you go. What exactly do you have to do when you do uh, a BEP? Okay, BEP is basically how you do, how you plan to use this. Okay, now, uh, before anything, Okay, I can tell you that a lot of people started doing BIM, okay, only to find to find themselves failing. Why? Because they panic. Okay, they panic. They find that what they are doing, they are taking uh, a bit of time to to do their BIM, to learn their BIM. Okay, and then they find themselves, oh, I have to give this, oh, I have to give that. So when they do that, when they panic. All right, when they panic, what you find is basically they will revert back to care. Okay, when they do that, then all that they have learned uh, is, 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 is will be gone to waste. So what I suggest here is basically for you to stick on, uh, you know, maybe not all your projects, but focus on a single project. Make it simple. Make it a, maybe a, a two, two, two-story building or four-story building, you know, don't, don't go for complicated when you start off learning here. Okay, what are the references that you have? What are the guidebooks that you have? 
Okay, in terms of Malaysian standard, this is what is available. Okay, now some of these are, uh, are not free. Okay, are not free, but if you get if you get your universities to buy them and put it in the library, then this becomes uh, accessible to you guys. Okay, so there are Malaysian standards towards this that you have to look into. Okay, going overseas, there are the Petri standards, there are the public access. So these are from Britain. Okay, of course we are we were British colony before, so that's why we keep referring to the Petri standard. Now moving on, which I have not included here, is the international standard. So ISO 19650 is the new international standard. I have not included here, but I mentioned here, so that you can look into this. Now this also is not free, okay? So if you are really interested and if you can get your universities to do uh, to buy one, okay, and put into the the digital library that will also be useful for future students and even to yourself. Okay, so it is ISO 19.19650. Okay, get your get your universities to, to purchase a copy. So in terms of the protocols, the layering and so on, these are the ones that you need to look into. Now you have to follow a certain standard in order to now, of course, at the end of the day, you have to work, you have to think that you're going to go, that one day you may want to go overseas to learn. Okay, to work. Sorry, not to learn, but to work. You know, because that opens your market, uh, your marketplace even bigger. Okay, uh, I do know of a few people that have gone overseas because of their a BIM competency, all right? They've gone to Hong Kong, they've gone to Dubai, they've gone because they are very capable BIM modelers or coordinators, or even some of them went on to become BIM managers. All right, then, uh, okay, what else do you need to think about? Okay, so you need to think about doing uh, templates or libraries. So these are the things that we do at the moment, okay? but we do it for CAD. So for BIM, you also have to do it, okay? It's the same. You're talking about templates for colors, for materials, for overrides and so on. So I quickly go through here, okay? And then uh, we are also talking about walls, doors, uh, let's say the, set, the templates for, for wall, wall comp, okay? Then you have others like uh, floors, Okay, moving on for the rules. All this we have to do. This is normally, uh, I don't know whether you do uh, technical drawings for your projects. You know, so, so this, are, this is some of the skills that needs to be done. And even when you work, you may, if you come towards the, to a company that hasn't done BIM, this is what you are expected to do, okay? but you may be lucky enough to have gone through companies which already have these templates. All right, so line style, coloring, managing line style, okay, hatching, all this is all there, okay. Now, once you have all this, all the rest becomes very, very uh, arbitrary or every, it becomes almost automatic if you want to do that. Okay, pushing further, moving quickly, Door, window, schedule, room, schedule, all this you need to look into. Now, this is very, very important. But you do it once, you spend some time, then you can do it for all the other projects. Okay, so you do it just at one time. Okay, title sheets, right? Then your collaboration. Okay, so you come to do. Now, this is the when you actually work. When you go to work and you have a big project, you have many stakeholders involved, you will either use the breakout, three BIM 360, and there are also private. Now all this costs money, but this is not for you to worry, but it will be good if you are able to go into companies later on for your internship, so that you can actually know how 
to use this, how to how how they use this to do projects real time. Okay. And normally there are teams inside here for bigger projects or smaller projects. This is this is how the format is going to be like. Okay. Now uh, talking about this is actually the same in when you're using manual, meaning 2Ds. Okay. But now instead of using 2Ds, you are using BIM to do so. So on the on principle, okay, on principle, what you are going to learn in practice is actually what you are doing at the moment. But now you're doing something a little bit extra. So when you say uh, it may be daunting to think that you have to learn a lot of things, but the things that you're going to learn is actually the things that you already doing at the moment. The process are still the same. Okay, it's just doing it slightly better and with more sophisticated tools. Right, so the roles of the beam, I've gone through some of this earlier. There are, uh, you have, sorry, let's go back. Okay, you have first and foremost the big managers, then the coordinator, which is the project. Now, uh, when I say about architecture, this also happens in the engineering, in the other landscape, or, or the rest. They will have the same setup. Okay, they will have the, the same setup to, to do their own individual project. Now, so technician, which is basically the modelers. Okay, these are the things that you will look into. What is the management, what is strategy, what is the production, and which are the roles you can see. All right. As I said earlier, all this uh, at the end of the at the end of the start, uh, you can download it by using the QR code. Okay. Uh, all right. I've gone through some of this, so I will just skip a bit. All right. I've got about like maybe five ten minutes left. Okay. This is an extension when you are actually doing it on your own project. Okay. So you will have uh, what I am not. I'm going to skip quite a number of this. As I say, I'm sharing all these slides with you, so you can have a look at it later on. Okay. Now, all this is available free to download from the CIBD. Okay. I'm sure a lot of you, when you you get excited and you get, oh, this is free. Okay. But sometimes free can also means that. You may download it, but you may not even want to read it. Okay, but these are the things that you need to, to look into, and these are what it spells out in this uh, BEP uh, guide. Okay, valuation, I'm going to skip through this. All right, basically, I'm telling you here, okay, whilst this is meant for the office, you can apply it to yourself. Okay, do a review of what you have learned assess yourself whether you are able to do what you set out to do okay that is very very important right so the benefits why your benefits here i'm saying to you while i stress again and again that how useful you are to the architect or the the, the firm that you're going to go to now when you look into this all right with your BIM skills you are not limited to just the architect's firm okay you can choose to work for the owners all right you can choose to work of course for the architects or the engineers okay contractors now because they have to do it and they are definitely lacking of uh, skilled people to do this so whilst you want to take a break from architecture sir, there is all these people that you can work for and you know, I don't like saying this, but some of them even pay better than the architecture for themselves. All right, so fabric creators. So you have owners, you can have a choice to work for or internship with owners, architects, okay, engineers, contractors, subcontractors, fabric creators. All of these are looking for competent BIM uh, staff, okay, people with this BIM abilities. <laughs> All right, so quickly going through, <clears throat> let me try and finish it. Okay, then uh, what have we been doing at PAM? All right, our passport grant includes all this. 
Okay, we have training modules. Now, our training modules are our own. The syllabus is our own. We find that uh, the training that is done by the third party are very generic. Generic means they teach you how to use the, the software, but not how to model according to what the architect really needs, the practice really needs. Okay, so this is something that you may want to consider later on. Okay, we have been summit. So for this year, we had one plan for September, so we may have to change it to an online conference, uh, online summit for this year. Okay, stay tuned. So it will probably, if everything goes all right, it will be held second and third of uh, September. At the same time, there is BIM Bootcamp, there is BIM Bus. This is what uh, what we do when uh, last year and this year. You know, we went down to the chapters in East Coast. Uh, let me see. We've been to Kota, Kota Baru, Kuala Turgano, Johor, you know, uh, Sarawak, Kuching, uh, Kota Kinabalu in Sabah, and of course in our KL Center itself. Now you can choose when, if you are a member, you can go to any of these things free. It's free of charge, okay? So being bus is free of charge. All right, then, uh, okay, so we, as I said this, now we have, uh, from time to time, we have uh, people giving team demos, meaning how to use, um, for example, Twin Motion, Lumions, you know, how this, this are done this year, we want to do a BIM competition for PAM. Uh, this is still being in the plans. And I've uh, elaborated on the collaboration with the institution. Okay, Pastor, your particular, if they have not come uh, or not aware, please do get them or your lecturers to come and contact them so that they, you can benefit or you or your juniors can benefit from this collaboration. So uh, beyond 2020, we have more programs. Uh, the best way to, to do these uh, new programs is to request. Now the request may come from uh, you guys, you know, the students themselves. It can come from the lecturers, it can come from the industry players. We are here to listen and to give, uh, hopefully, you know, to, to to do what you want us to do. So in closing, okay, so these are the things that BIM can do for you or uh, uh, what do you call it, IR 4.0, because this is part and parcel, okay, for, for, for us. Okay, the, as I said, the, you know, there are new models, new roles that are coming up, BIM managers, BIM coordinators, BIM modelers, okay. So the use of BIM will definitely be the future okay and i said the future now it's already happening especially among the bigger companies okay bigger companies are taking the lead all right i'd like to leave you with some uh <clears throat> quotes okay now you may think that it's not useful but when you look at this the first one look around you the architects surveyors engineers that you know are trying to take the food out uh, table. They are your friends. They may be your friends, but they are also your competitors. When you change this to your friends, your friends can be your study, your students, your fellow students. They are doing the same thing. They want to do this because they are also going out to go after internship or jobs after they graduate. All right. So uh, Bill Gates have said this, the most important or the most useful way to differentiate yourself, okay, or your company from your fellow students, okay, your competition, which is your fellow students, may not be just your university, in your university, but other universities. And if you, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not wrong, there are close to more than 50 architectural institution, institution that teaches architecture okay uh, in malaysia alone so if you tell if you tell uh, if you multiply that by 50 so every year you can see how many number of 
students or graduates are coming out to go after a job prospect out there. So get your uh, skills now. Okay, and uh, I like to leave, uh, what do you call it, with my own quote here. All right, acquired knowledge without positive action is absolutely useless. And as I promised here, okay, for all of the rest, take out your handphone, okay, and scan the code. The QR code, I'll leave it on for quite a bit, okay, for you to quickly scan this so that you can download my presentation here. So with that, uh, thank you very much, and I'll pass it over to the MC. Uh, so that's the, okay, over to you. Slightly out of time, <laughs> beyond time. Carry on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for the, the sharing, uh, Kitek Abu Zarim. So uh, I hope everyone has enjoyed the talk. Um, feel free to type down your questions in the chat, and then we'll uh, bring it up to the to the speaker. In the in the meantime, if you guys uh, want to download the um, presentation, you can scan the code, the QR code, and download it. By the way, I normally do this after all my talks. Uh, give a copy of the presentation. Uh, that if I had enough time to do the, the QR code itself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No questions? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll, um, we'll leave uh, them a bit of time first for the questions. Is there uh, any upcoming courses for for PAM regarding uh, have, Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, what we are trying to do now is to convert our courses to be online. Okay, because of the COVID-19, there is no physical um, uh, gatherings and we can't do any physical gathering till after the 30th of June. So 1st of June, July, we may be able to do it. That is also subject to the directive from the health ministry and also uh, ROS, which is the Registrar of Societies. So we are staying on here. In fact, some of the PAMS, uh, PAMS activities have actually gone online already. Okay, so this is the so-called new normal now. Okay. Um, how do you how do we how do you get do you more information on the the dates and uh, how to join? Okay, the... so I I if you are a fan member, you should be getting this uh, email. Email. Oh, okay, so I see. Do read your emails. Don't just cancel or delete it as soon as uh, without reading it because that's what we are going to. And we are trying to make all our programs for this year to be online okay. uh, mm. because we cannot do this and we have talked to our sponsors and partners and uh, most of them are agreeable that we do it this way. Of course, everybody uh, still needs, uh, you know, would prefer the physical or, you know, meeting up and chatting with all of you, but uh, we have to suit with the time. So until and unless the uh, CMO or the CCMO uh, is, is lifted, okay, we will still have to uh, uh, digest or uh, you know, adjust to the new normal, mm. which is everything online, just like this, you know, this is online now, yep. okay, so I can't, I can't see you guys physically, but at least I'm able to pass or share my knowledge on, on this, okay. okay. Um, last call if anyone has uh, questions. Um, if not, then um, uh, we will end soon. So we'll, okay, in the meantime, um, okay, yeah, thank I, you for I, I joining I, us.
Yeah. Yeah. I think I've put uh, everybody to sleep already, especially <laughs> in the afternoon and after that. Uh, probably heavy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks a lot okay. for having me. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining for today's online lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, so do keep in touch with us with our uh, Instagram and Facebook page for the next one. So until then, uh, have a nice day and we'll catch you next time. Thank you, uh, architect. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you.